Hi guys, welcome to Drum Dog and welcome to another one of our kit setup videos and today we are focusing on the hi-hat stand. So while it may sound simple enough, the hi-hat is a surprisingly complicated little device with lots of little options that can make a big difference to our playing, since the hi-hats are something that we're using most, if not all of the time. So first things first, I feel like it's really important that we understand how this thing actually works. So if I strip a few parts off here, it is actually fairly simple. We've got a big tube that runs down the outside with a small little rod that runs up through the middle. Now that rod is attached to our pedal at the bottom so we can move it up and down individually to the outside tube. So where the real genius comes in here is where we have our bottom symbol attached to the outside tube which holds it at a fixed height and then we attach our top symbol to the rod that goes through the middle in order to let them move independently to each other and Close the hat. Now that we understand how the stand works, that has an immediate effect on our first adjustable point, and that is getting our cymbal height right, because that's gonna change depending on how high we have our stools, what the rest of our kit is like height-wise, as well as what style of music we're playing. If we're playing something more chilled out, we might want it lower down. If we're digging into them a bit more, we might want them higher up. But unlike all other cymbal stands, we have two heights to adjust here, because we have our bottom cymbal height, here on that outer tube that we spoke about and there's our bottom symbol we can move him there and then we have our top symbol height independently on this t-bolt on what we're calling the hi-hat clutch for the top symbol a bit more on that later so with those two separate heights being adjustable we're also changing the gap between the two symbols now in the same way we might want our hats at different heights depending on what style we're playing, we're gonna want that gap between the two symbols at different gaps depending on what style we're playing. Some of the metal guys out there might have this gap set really tight so we can play an open hat sound without having to touch the pedal at all so we can play some double kick pedal. Whereas some more relaxed and groove based playing might want a bit more of a gap in the hats so we can really get more expressive with our left foot and coax different sounds out of the cymbals. But if you're a little unsure as to what gap is going to be right for you, a good starting place is about half an inch to an inch. And there we go and we can see that gap up at the front and that should give us enough to work with. Now one setting that can often go missed by a lot of players is a subtle one and that is our bottom cymbal angle. Now we can change the angle on this little adjustable seat with this screw. Now while this does change slightly from manufacturer to manufacturer, the general design is we have a lock nut here which we can release in order to then use this bottom screw to actually either increase or decrease our bottom cymbal angle. And you can already hear my hats chattering away there. Because if we have our hats too flat with no angle on it at all, it can make for a very flat sounding step sound. So adding a little bit of angle onto that bottom seat not only gives us a bit more sizzle with less work, but it gives us a bit more bite in our step sound and even a bit more volume. So don't forget about that bottom cymbal angle because it can make a really big difference in tuning in our sizzle and step sounds. And now that brings us back onto the clutch. Now this is the little guy that clutches the top cymbal onto our center rod. Now this is the part of the hi-hat stand I see most often adjusted incorrectly. And it's simple enough really. It's just understanding what different pieces of this actually do to the cymbal. 
So on our clutch here, you can see we've got two felts that our symbol sits in the middle of, and then we have a bottom nut, which is gonna stop it falling off the bottom, which we wanna do all the way up until it stops turning. And we're locking that on so it's not coming loose inside of our hi-hats. Then on the other side of the symbol, we have thinner little adjustments which lock onto each other, which is why we have two of them. So if I hold that one still and I undo the other one from it, that then lets us adjust how tight the clutch is holding that top symbol. Now this is a really important adjustment and it's really important that we have both of those up there so we can lock them in position and stop them moving while we're playing. Now why is that adjustment so important? Let me show you exactly what happens if we have this set too loose and then try and play our hi-hats. So with our clutch too loose, we can see a gap here instantly. And what that gap does is gives us free play once the cymbals are already touching each other for the pedal to move. Now all of that free play is gonna stop the cymbals picking up for a choke when we're trying to open the hats. And it's gonna stop us having full control of how much they are actually touching each other. But equally, on the other end of the spectrum, the last thing we want to do is crank these guys down as tight as we can. Because what that's going to produce is a very stiff and limited movement from our top symbol. And if that top symbol is too tight, it's not going to be able to move as naturally as it wants to, to be able to sizzle against our bottom symbol. So what we're trying to do with this clutch adjustment is balance between holding the cymbal tightly enough that we haven't got any free play, but not so tight that we're actually stifling that cymbal and stopping it from moving and swaying naturally. So in summary, we just want to make sure that those felts are just nipping up that top hat and make sure you've got both of your locking nuts on there locked together so it's not loosening off as you're playing. Now for our final adjustment here, we have our spring tension. Although we can't see the spring in this in the same way you can on a bass drum pedal, there is a spring inside the stand which is returning that central rod up into the up position. Now again, this is something that does vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but the general rule of thumb is that the spring tension is found around here on the stand. And we have an adjustment range from a nice loose tension where the pedal is quite easy to press down and it's a limited return spring, all the way up to a much higher tension where it's gonna take a lot more force to press the pedal down but equally it's returning with a lot more force. Now this is completely a personal preference thing, but don't be afraid to experiment with both extreme ends of that tension and find out what works for you. It's often about getting a balance between a response that's fast enough, but doesn't take too much force to keep that left foot held down. Just as a final note, as the hi-hat is a pedal and it's so easy to have our stepping motion turn into forward force, we'll sometimes find that our hi-hat pedal is slowly creeping across our practice room or stage. So it is really important that we focus on the stability of the stand and use the tools in the stand to keep it fixed. So first things first, we wanna make sure our legs are down because if our legs are even just a little bit up off the ground, we are gonna have movement in that stand, which is gonna have it wander across the floor. That's the same for two-legged stands as it is three-legged stands. And our last point there, and the most important one for hi-hat stand creep, is getting our spikes dug into the floor. So this particular stand has spikes built into the feet on a little drum key adjustment there, but most stands have spikes built into the main base just here where we can screw them down and dig into the carpet. Now you will find that playing on different surfaces in different rooms have different slippage factors. Some rooms are grippier than others. So be used to the adjustments you can make to your hi-hat stand to stop it getting away from you and make your gigs and performances that bit more stress-free. 
And that just about sums up everything we can do with our hi-hat stand. I know it may not seem of face value as the most exciting topic in the world, but as drummers, it's really important that we understand each element of our kit and how we can make the most out of it and then have it work harmoniously with us to make the things that we want to make and play the sounds that we want to play. This video was requested by our subscriber, Steve Schenker. So thank you, Steve. This one goes out to you. And if any of you other guys have any particular videos or tutorials in mind that you want to see, then pop them down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we hope to see you again soon.